What's happening everybody? It is Trey here. I'm joined again by my dad Sean and today we are going to go over Neil Young's classic album Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, never heard any Neil Young songs. I really haven't either. Yeah, so this is our, our first time uh, listening to this record and really Neil as a whole. And if this is your first time joining us guys, we really appreciate it. Here are reactions to the classics. We react to classic albums in a track by track detailed review. And if that sounds like something interesting to y'all, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button. And I don't think you will be disappointed. So all that good fun stuff to stay. Let's uh, get to some quick facts. Well, Trey, this is Neil's second uh, solo studio album released in May of 1969. Mm -hmm. It's only four months after his debut solo album, which this one was kind of viewed as a total rejection of that album. That album was very polished, and this one is not. Uh, this thing is number 208 on the Rolling Stones' top 500 albums of all time. It's his first album where he's got his his band Crazy Horse uh, backing him up. Yeah, coming from Buffalo Springfield beforehand. Yeah, and Buffalo Springfield was right before this, and right after this album, he joins Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where this thing fits, right between those two. All right, we're up to the first of the seven tracks on this album, Cinnamon Girl. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing was released as a single. It hit number 55 on the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, this song, along with Cowgirl in the Sand and Down by the River, uh, Neil wrote him when he had 103 fever uh, at home in Topanga, yeah. California. So he probably should have went to the hospital, but uh, but hey, it sparked some good. He was uh, song half writing. of this album, yeah. So what do you think of this thing? No, I, I thought this was a good opener. It was shorter than a lot of the other songs it was. on the record. It was my first, you know, introduction to Neil, and uh, he, he kind of just has a a cool voice to him yeah you know just a, a nice demeanor and uh, Danny Witten who was on a lot of uh, early recordings and uh, helped Neil out early on is on this recording harmonizing yeah with him and this is famous for uh, it's they call it the, the one note guitar yep. solo the jangling D note on there critics really enjoy that one and I thought it had a, a nice uh, almost distorted like guitar sound yeah. I know he's kind of cited as the godfather of grunge, grunge you can, yeah you can kind of see that a little bit here in uh, the, the distortions and the guitar work and uh, I, I just thought it was a, a, a cool neat way to start the album and it was one of my favorite one of my favorites as well. I show up to the title track, Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere. This is my favorite song on here. Neil's vocals sound great on here. Great story. He wants to get out of the rat race, wants to go back home. Um, got a girl there he's interested in. I'm sure most of these rock stars at one point or another just wanted to slow down and not have this crazy life. No, I, I'd agree with you there, Sean. I thought this song was really excellent. And uh, again, nice uh, guitar work, kind of had room to breathe. It wasn't yeah. very, you know, it wasn't all quick and whatnot, but he let the notes go, kind of ha had some soul behind them, yeah. I thought. And uh, yeah, I, I just thought this was a, a good transition from Cinnamon Girl as well, a little slower paced, and I, I kind of like the back backing vocals where it's like la 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 yeah it kind of gets in, it got in my head a little yeah, bit so uh, again a, a different little unique spin on on the track and uh, made it pretty solid for me it takes us to track number three round and round it won't be long and this was not one of my favorite tracks it was a uh, slower paced and I, I thought it stretched out a, a little long uh, for me personally that said I did like the backing vocals by um, Rob Robin Lane, yeah. and uh, the, the lyrics themselves had a good message behind it. Yeah, the lyrics are really good here. It kind of goes around one fundamental lyric. Round and round and round we spin mm -hmm. to weave a wall to hem us in. Basically, I think it's about just, we do all these meaningless activities. Every yeah. day. Some of it we have to do, and it just kind of puts us into this little spot in life where we're kind of trapped. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, Trey, I liked it more than you did. Uh, it's just kind of this little melancholy tune that just, mm -hmm. it does go on for quite a while, but I actually enjoyed it. Well, Trey, now we're up to Down by the River, uh, which apparently is about someone who shoots and kills his lover down by yeah. a river. <laughs> little a, murder ballad. A murder ballad, yes. Like a lot of these lyrics that we run into from the 60s, the people who write these songs will say one thing one time, and something else another time. Yeah, years of, later, so we this change. song, and so we don't know what it was really about. Neil said two different things. First, in 1970, so the year after this thing was released, he claimed there's no real murder in it. It's about blowing your thing with a chick. It's a plea. It's a desperate cry. 
But 14 years later in New Orleans in 1984, he said, it depicts a man who had a lot of trouble controlling himself, who catches his woman cheating on him, then meets her down by the river and shoots, shoots her. her. <laughs> I don't know. It's an interesting song. Um, it starts out in an interesting way. Yeah, you start off with a, a nice electric guitar riff. Yeah. Then we get some the bass and drums and a snare drum coming in. And then uh, it just kind of goes into the lead vocals. And Fish guitarist Trey Anastasio said something really interesting about this song. He said if he was teaching a master class to young guitarists, the first thing he'd play them is the first minute of this guitar solo and down yeah. by the river and just again showing how well thought of neil is not only as a songwriter but on the guitar and that's really on display here it's a long song but i, I kind of like how it gave time for the guitars yeah. and the instruments to breathe and be showcased it's kind of split into two you got lyrics in this long mm -hmm. guitar then back to the lyrics that's a really cool way to present a song and Trey, next up we have the losing end when you're on in mm -hmm. parentheses this starts the b-side of the record four songs on the a-side only three on the b-side so he misses his girl he's on the losing end again she's nowhere to be found it kind of seems like it's a repeating pattern for him in this song yeah and i, I think again the themes continue in the album of longing for a love or having Having something not necessarily work out with the love and like you kill her down by the river <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. No, yeah. yeah so it just kind of continues that theme this song wasn't near the top of my list but i didn't think it was a bad song by any means it was just uh, more kind of there for me than some of these other tracks following up on the theme you just talked about next track running dry in parentheses requiem for the rockets he wants his girl back he misses her badly she's gone as you said same thing just in a little different way yeah and this was interesting instrumentally because there was like a almost like a violin I don't know if it was a violin yeah, it was there was some type of uh, stringed instrument being played and so that kind of made for a unique sound differentiated it for me in the album and then we get into the album closer cowgirl in the sand man this one was my personal favorite by a pretty decent amount because you just start this thing off really cool sound yeah. goes right into an awesome guitar solo and here he's talking about a promiscuous woman or some believe he's talking about three different women in, in each, each verse each yeah. verse and after each verse there's a bunch of distortion and great guitar work and solos here I, I just really like whenever the guitars have effects added to them and are different than just what you would normally hear and especially for 1969 yeah, when this he's came a pioneer. out uh, I'm a big fan of Nirvana and you can even hear the influence Nirvana had whether they knew it or not they did from, know it actually them Soundgarden yeah, Pearl Jam they all like, all go the back way to from Neil yeah. Neil Young and so it was kind of cool to connect those dots you know 25 years yeah. uh, in a gap there but all in all man this song was just uh, really unbelievable in my eyes and I, I thought it was great and this follows a lot of the down by the river theme as far as there's lyrics up front there's a long guitar and then we go mm -hmm. back to lyrics I thought it was a really good song as well I agree with you you know Trey a lot of experts point back to this very song and say this is some of the most powerful and untamed lead guitar ever played and I think that points back to what mm -hmm. you were saying with the distorted guitar so all in all for me an excellent track that brings us up to our favorite tracks I already alluded to the title track everybody knows this is nowhere mm -hmm. is my favorite yeah and cowgirl in the sand and everybody knows this is nowhere and I'm gonna throw down by the river in there as well for me I just thought all those brought something different to the table and uh, it was pleasant to the ear great guitar work throughout and that's going to bring us to our overall score. What do you got for this, Sean? You know, Trey, I'm going to go with a 775, which in our grading scale is, is high. It's mm -hmm. a very good album. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing more stuff from Neil, but it was a very good introduction to it. Yeah, I'm going to be right there with you, just a little above. I'm going an 8.0 out of 10. The guitar work for me is something that yeah. really uh, elevated it. And I, I know he's heralded as you know having some uh, unbelievable albums in the 70s as well and with uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Yeah. So like you, I'm, I'm excited to hear some more from Neil. It's always fun to discover some of these rock greats that we've never heard of before and dive a little deeper into their catalog. So looking forward to more from that. But uh, from today, I guess that's going to wrap it up. It. Everybody knows this is nowhere. Let us know what you think of this record and comment what your favorite track is. We're going to have more from him in the future. So let us know what album you like us to review next from Neil Young. 
As always, Sean, thanks for the research. Sure. Uh, always a, a big help to, to kind of get some nice uh, background on these tracks. But uh, that's going to do it from today, y'all. Be sure to also hit that big red subscribe button. And happy listening, my friends. We will see you next time.